Russia is attempting something extraordinary. Deep within the Mikoyan Design Bureau, engineers are working on an aircraft that could redefine air combat for the 21st century. Not through fiction or fantasy, but through an ambitious bet on speed, altitude, and technology that may be beyond Russia's current capabilities. The MiG-41. A sixth-generation interceptor designed to fly at Mach 4, operate at the edge of space, and intercept threats that current fighters can't touch. But here's what makes this story compelling. We don't know if Russia can actually build it. On September 16th, 2025, retired Russian Air Force commander Vladimir Popov told Russia Today that the MiG-41's external design phase is complete, with prototype flight testing projected for the coming years. This announcement reignited global attention on a program that many Western analysts had dismissed as Russian propaganda. But the real question isn't whether Russia wants to build this aircraft. It's whether they can. And that answer reveals far more about modern aerospace engineering, geopolitics, and the future of air warfare than any fictional test flight ever could. Before we dive into what this aircraft represents, if military technology and aerospace engineering fascinate you, hit that subscribe button. Today, we're separating fact from fiction on one of the most ambitious and uncertain fighter programs in the world. To understand why Russia needs the MiG-41, you need to understand what it's replacing. The MiG-31 Foxhound. This supersonic interceptor has been defending Russian airspace since 1981. More than 500 were built during the Cold War, and around 370 were delivered to the Russian Air Force. Today, estimates suggest approximately 252 remain in active service, with ongoing upgrades to the MiG-31BM variant. The Foxhound is genuinely impressive. It can reach Mach 2.83, climb at 208 meters per second, and track up to 10 targets simultaneously while engaging four of them. Its Zaslon radar can scan out to 200 kilometers, and it carries the long-range R-37M missile capable of hitting targets over 300 kilometers away. Russia has even modified variants to carry the Kinzhal hypersonic missile, transforming Cold War interceptors into strategic strike platforms. But there's a problem. The MiG-31 fleet is aging out. These aircraft are approaching or exceeding 40 years of service life. By 2028, Russian defense media reports suggest the unmodernized MiG-31s will reach the end of their operational lifespan. Even with upgrades, the Foxhound wasn't designed for the threats Russia now faces. Hypersonic missiles. Fifth generation stealth fighters like the F-35. Low orbit reconnaissance satellites. The MiG-31's radar. And weapon systems, despite upgrades, struggle against modern stealth aircraft. When Norway replaced its F-16 with F-35s, the balance of power over the Barents Sea shifted dramatically. Russia needs a replacement. That's where the MiG-41 PAKDP program comes in. The Mikoyan PAK DP program, Perspektivny Aviazioni Complex Dal Novo Perekvatsika, or Prospective Aviation Complex for Long Range Interception, officially began development in January 2021. But its roots go back much further. Russian engineers revisited Soviet-era high-speed interceptor research from the 1980s, when the USSR was developing platforms to counter strategic bombers penetrating from the Arctic. When the Soviet Union collapsed, those programs were shelved. The design concepts, however, survived. By 2018, Mikoyan, the legendary design bureau behind the MiG-15, MiG-21, MiG-29, and MiG-31, began adapting those Cold War principles to modern materials and propulsion technology. Ilya Tarasenko, Director General of RSK MiG, outlined the vision in a July 2020 interview with RT. The aircraft would be capable of Mach 4 to 4.3, operate at very high altitudes including near-space environments, and potentially incorporate anti-missile laser systems. He even suggested it could later be transformed into an unmanned variant. The design was finalized by the end of 2019, followed by wind tunnel testing and scale model validation. In 2020, the Russian Ministry of Defense selected the most promising configuration for further development. According to Russian defense analyst Vasily Kashin, 
this would qualify as a sixth generation fighter project. The claimed specifications are extraordinary. Mach 4.3 maximum speed, roughly 5,170 kilometers per hour. Operational ceiling above 30 kilometers, potentially reaching near space altitudes where conventional fighters lose control authority. Combined cycle propulsion using turbojet and ramjet technology to transition smoothly from subsonic to hypersonic speeds. The mission set is equally ambitious. Intercept hypersonic missiles traveling at Mach 9, engage fifth generation stealth fighters, neutralize low orbit satellites, and conduct long range patrol over Russia's vast territory. If achieved, this would represent a fundamental leap in interceptor capabilities. No current manned fighter operates in this performance envelope. But here's the critical question. Are these design goals or demonstrated capabilities? And that brings us to the real story. As of December 2025, the MiG-41 exists primarily on paper and in wind tunnel models. There is no flying prototype. There are no confirmed test flights. The September 2025 announcement by Vladimir Popov stated that a prototype flight is expected in the coming years, with projections now pointing to 2026 to 2027 for a potential first flight. Operational introduction, if the program succeeds, wouldn't occur until the late 2020s or early 2030s. Western defense analysts have expressed significant skepticism. Some have characterized the MiG-41 as largely conceptual, lacking a prototype or planned production pipeline. Others note that Russia previously dismissed the project as unrealistic before reviving it. The technical challenges are immense. Sustained hypersonic flight generates surface temperatures exceeding 600 degrees Celsius, requiring advanced heat-resistant materials and active thermal management systems. The combined cycle propulsion system must seamlessly transition between turbojet and ramjet modes while maintaining efficiency at extreme altitudes where air density approaches zero. Developing these technologies requires access to advanced materials, semiconductor components, precision manufacturing, and extensive testing infrastructure. And that's where Russia faces its biggest obstacle, sanctions. Since 2022, Sweeping Western export controls have targeted Russia's aerospace and defense sectors, cutting off access to critical components. Advanced semiconductors, composite materials, precision tooling, and electronic components, all essential for sixth-generation fighter development, are now extremely difficult or impossible for Russia to obtain legally. Russia's aerospace industry is struggling. In July 2025, Anatoly Gaidansky, CEO of aircraft parts manufacturer Aerocomposite, admitted that domestic producers aren't even close to meeting the needs of the sector, with particular concerns about the electronic component base. The cost of domestically assembled aircraft has surged 45% to 70% over the past two years due to supply shortages and increased reliance on workarounds. Russia's efforts to revive Soviet-era airframes and boost domestic production have repeatedly missed deadlines. Even Russia's civil aviation sector, less technologically demanding than military fighters, faces nothing short of catastrophe, according to trade compliance analysts. If Russia struggles to maintain Boeing and Airbus aircraft with sanctioned supply chains, how will they develop and produce a sixth-generation hypersonic interceptor requiring cutting-edge materials and electronics? Despite these challenges, Russia's push for the MiG-41 reflects a genuine strategic need. Hypersonic weapons are proliferating. Russia has deployed the Avangard glide vehicle and Kinjal missile. China fields the DF-17 hypersonic glide vehicle. The United States is developing hypersonic cruise missiles and boost glide vehicles. Current air defense systems can detect hypersonic threats but cannot reliably intercept them. Advanced radars like the USAN-TPY-2 and SPY-6 can track hypersonic targets, but no existing interceptor can match their speed and maneuverability during the terminal phase. The US is developing the Glide Phase Interceptor, GPI, specifically to counter hypersonic glide vehicles, but operational capability isn't expected until the latter half of this decade. 
The Pentagon's Twister program is exploring endoatmospheric and exoatmospheric interceptors. But these systems are years away. Russia's answer is an aircraft fast enough and agile enough to intercept hypersonic weapons during flight. The MiG-41's claimed Mach 4.3 speed and 30 plus kilometer operational ceiling would theoretically allow engagement opportunities that ground-based systems and slower fighters cannot exploit. There's also a defensive dimension. If NATO deploys hypersonic strike weapons, Russia needs interceptors capable of engaging them over Russian territory. The MiG-41's extreme altitude performance would place it above the effective engagement envelope of many NATO surface-to-air missile systems. From an offensive perspective, a limited number of MiG-41s operating from bases deep within Russian territory could threaten NATO early warning aircraft, aerial refueling tankers, and surveillance platforms operating over Poland and the Baltic states, all without crossing NATO airspace. The strategic logic is sound. But strategy doesn't build aircraft. Money, technology, and industrial capacity do. Russia isn't alone in pursuing sixth-generation capabilities. The United States is developing the next-generation air dominance, NGAD, fighter, expected to cost approximately $300 million per aircraft, nearly three times the cost of an F-35. The U.S. Air Force has budgeted $28.48 billion for NGAD development between 2025 and 2029, with an additional $577 million dedicated to the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program, AI-driven drones that will operate alongside NGAD fighters. The NGAD program prioritizes speed, range, sensor fusion, and manned-unmanned teaming over traditional stealth shaping, acknowledging that future air combat may occur at extreme altitudes and velocities where conventional dogfighting becomes irrelevant. The NGAD fighter is expected to enter service around 2030, supported by CCA drones costing approximately $30 million each. Europe is pursuing the GCAP Tempest program, a collaborative effort between the UK, Italy, and Japan. China is investing heavily in high-speed interceptor technology, building on experience with the J-20 stealth fighter and various hypersonic weapons programs. Russia's MiG-41 program faces a critical timeline challenge. If Western sixth-generation programs achieve operational capability in the 2030 to 2035 timeframe, and Russia's MiG-41 remains conceptual or enters limited production years later, the technological gap will widen rather than narrow. Some analysts believe Russia will produce only 30 to 50 MiG-41s for elite regiments, assuming the program succeeds at all. Others argue Russia's industrial capacity cannot support mass production of such a complex platform given current sanctions. The comparison with Russia's Su-57 program is instructive. The Su-57 was announced in the early 2000s, made its first flight in 2010, and didn't achieve operational status until 2020, years behind schedule. Production numbers remain limited compared to initial projections. The MiG-41 is even more technologically ambitious than the Su-57. If Russia struggled to field a fifth-generation fighter under more favorable economic conditions, the sixth-generation timeline faces even greater uncertainty. So what's the real story of the MiG-41? It's not a fictional test flight that never happened. It's the story of a nation attempting to maintain strategic relevance through aerospace technology despite facing enormous economic, technical, and industrial constraints. Russia has legitimate strategic requirements for a MiG-31 replacement. The design concepts appear technically sound, building on decades of Soviet and Russian interceptor expertise. The claimed performance specifications Mach 4.3, near space operations, hypersonic missile interception, address real operational needs. But claiming performance goals and achieving them are entirely different challenges. As of December 2025, the MiG-41 remains in development with no flying prototype. Sanctions have severely constrained Russia's access to critical components and materials. The aerospace industry is struggling with basic civil aviation maintenance, raising serious questions about capacity for cutting-edge military development. 
Vladimir Popov's September 2025 statement confirms that external design work is complete, but a prototype flight is still years away. Whether that prototype flies successfully, whether it achieves claimed performance specifications, and whether Russia can produce the aircraft in meaningful numbers remain open questions. The MiG-41 forces us to confront an uncomfortable reality. Ambition doesn't equal capability. Russia wants a sixth-generation interceptor. Whether they can build one is an entirely different question. What we're witnessing isn't a demonstration of strength. It's a gamble. A bet that Russian engineers can overcome sanctions, technological barriers, and industrial limitations to field an aircraft that would genuinely change the strategic calculus in contested airspace. Will it work? We'll find out in the coming years. What we know for certain is this. The MiG-41 represents one of the most ambitious aerospace programs currently underway, attempted under some of the most challenging conditions imaginable. Do you think Russia can overcome these obstacles and field an operational MiG-41? Or will this program join the long list of ambitious defense projects that never left the drawing board? Let me know in the comments. If you found this analysis valuable, hit subscribe for more deep dives into military aviation that separate fact from fiction. Next video, we're analyzing the actual development status of China's J-20 and what it reveals about modern fighter capabilities. You won't want to miss it.